Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of GoTo Tech Reviews. Today we are going to be taking a look at a Z270 board. This is the Z270X Gaming K7 from Oros. Okay, so before we get into the overview and review of this motherboard, it's actually more of an overview because I'm just going over some of the features. Um, I am actually using it right now in uh, my HTPC downstairs, but I just wanted to say that I'm still working on my Ryzen review. I'm still kind of working out a few things and still kind of formulating a game plan on how I really want to approach it. Um, I think I'm going to break it up into several different categories rather than one large Ryzen video. You know, I think I'm going to do a little section on overclocking, a little section on, uh, you know, the Ray Spire cooler, and if that allows any overclocking headroom. Um, so just stay tuned for those kind of videos. Also, I've got my uh, GTX 1080 Ti. That'll come in the next uh, two to three weeks. Uh, depending on availability. I did the step up program from the uh, GTX 1080 for the win 2 edition of which I will be putting an unboxing video in the next week or two. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the features and see what this board has to offer. Oros is Gigabyte's new premium branding for their motherboards. The Gaming K7 is a beautifully minimalistic black board with white and silver accents that will go with about any build. It has an excellent feature set for the price as well. There are three PCIe Gen 3 slots for three-way graphics, three PCI Express x one slots, and two M.2 NVMe PCIe Gen 3 x 4 slots with support for up to 22.110 modules. When paired with the 7th Gen KB Lake Core CPU, these will also support Intel's Optane memory. Along the right side are four LED flank DDR4 dual-channel DIMM slots with XMP support up to 41.33 MHz. Also along the right side is a U.2 connector, three SATA Express ports for six individual SATA 3 connectors followed by two USB 3.0 headers, a system fan header, and the 24-pin ATX connector. Along the top of the board we have an 8-pin EPS connector and two hybrid fan headers. The power delivery system has a robust 11-phase design cooled by two VRM heat sinks connected by a heat pipe for additional overclocking headroom. The connectors at the bottom of the board are a BIO switch, the front panel HD audio header, RGBW LED header, two USB 2.0 headers, a debug LED, another hybrid fan header, and front panel I.O. header. The onboard audio includes the Sound Blaster X-Fi MB5 plus ALC1220 with high-end Nishikon capacitors and a removable op-amp for customized sound. This is largely covered by a shroud along the left side of the motherboard. And finally, the rear I.O. sports a PS2 connector, two USB 3.0 ports with the DAC up technology, Display port, HDMI port, USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type A and Type C, Killer E2500 Gaming Network, and Intel Gigabit LAN, two more USB 3.0 and two USB 2.0 ports, followed by the 7.1 channel audio out and SP diff out. So the Z270X Gaming K7 from Oros is a fantastic motherboard. There's it's packed with features, it looks really good. It looks especially good in my Fantex P400 Tempered Glass Edition, of which I also have a review coming in the next two to three weeks, uh, so stay tuned for that as well. And overall, I'm really happy with the board. The, the features are really good. It's been easy to work with. And overall, I think the aesthetic of the board is absolutely amazing with the minimalistic black and white and silver accents. It just looks really good and it goes really well with any of the uh, configurations you're going to do. And I also really like the RGB LED implementation. Uh, the LEDs are a bit bright and I think that little strip along the right is a little hokey and it, I don't know, that's just me. But overall, I think it's very well done. Um, and in my particular system, I really highlight it and I, I really like the, uh, what is it, the, the wave, the rainbow wave. Uh, as you can see, I'm kind of a fan of that. So anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. If you want to stay up to date with what I'm doing on the channel and some of the builds I'm working on and some of the parts that I'm looking at, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at GoToTechReviews. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.